Hi everyone, Sean here from the Sci-Fi Model Guy and welcome to chapter three of the Klingon Bird of Prey build series. Now this is the final video of the building part of this model. We're gonna be doing another video on the diorama sometime down the line, but I'm not sure when that's gonna be, so we're just gonna release this one, call this one the final go and, and go from there. And I'll talk about the diorama here in a second. Uh, just quick disclaimer here everyone, if you do hear my neighbor mowing his lawn. I do apologize. I was just about to start recording this and he decided now is the perfect time to mow his lawn. Well, what can we do? Hopefully you can't hear it too much. Anyway, uh, here she is right here and uh, she's all ready to go. Um, we are going to have to put a little stand on the nose here. We're going to talk about that in the video here and some final uh, things that went on with decisions on the model. Now, let's talk about the diorama. So, Right here, I've got here a 10 by 20 inch gesso board. It's a panel. Uh, gesso is kind of um, a thing you use for oil painting, acrylic painting. I've done a little bit of that. So we're gonna make a, a, a matte painting background just like you see in Star Trek III. I'm gonna put up a, a screenshot of that right here. And this is the look that we're going to try to mimic with this. So uh, back to the panel here. So. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to do the uh, the video for that with painting and stuff. I've done a little bit of oil painting. I'm not the best, but I can do a little Bob Ross type of stuff here. So basically we're gonna get a, a nice um, a square piece of plywood and put some sand on it and then the gesso board will be behind here. Hopefully you can hear me, <laughs> uh, but it'll be behind there and this will be all the Vulcan, uh, the planet Vulcan with the mountains and everything behind there. So it's gonna look pretty cool. I thought this was a nice size. And then we're gonna be putting some sand down there. Uh, just this couple colors of sand here that we got at uh, Hobby Lobby. Be doing that with some Mod Podge, some other rocks and stuff. May I might light it with the little spotlights that you see on there, but I haven't quite decided yet. Could probably do that easily with a little nine volt battery and put some LEDs. I think that would look kind of cool. The um, the only other thing I do have to do here, everyone, is I have to make the decal for the HMS Bounty, which I am going to do. Uh, I just have to get on the computer and make that. But we'll reveal all that when it comes time for the diorama. So anyway, that's uh, the intro for this one. Hopefully hopefully you like this one and you're, if you're following along with me, uh, again, we did not like this kit. Wanted to do something a little more simple. And the diorama, I'm looking forward to doing that. I also have to figure out how to set that up, how to record it, what I'm gonna do, uh, pick my colors out and stuff. And because I haven't picked up an oil paint, uh, painting supply stuff in a couple of years. Uh, but I think we could do it, some basic mountain stuff. If you're familiar with Bob Ross, those are the techniques I'm gonna use. I think it would work really well for something like this. Just kind of like a neat little matte painting in the background, nothing too detailed. But it should turn out pretty cool. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are all interested in that and would want to see it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you're even interested in seeing a, uh, you know, some oil painting on diorama on this just as a, a fun little video. Let me know. I think it would be cool. Anyway, that's it, everyone. Enjoy this one and join me next week uh, as we tackle the HAL 9000. HAL's right over there. I've already recorded the unboxing of that one. And stay tuned for chapter three of the sci-fi workshop work on getting stark of iron from stark of iron <laughs> uh, to come on and talk about his builds he does some cool iron man stuff some uh, 3d printing and painting and stuff so we're looking forward to hanging out with tony and talking about his models and stuff so catch you later guys see you down the road okay everyone so the ship is pretty much done at this point there really wasn't a whole lot to record on it um I haven't been out here for a couple of weeks. It's been I've uh, been on a trip, and uh, thankfully we'd had enough rec uh, content recorded to to keep the channel going. So, um, what we've done here so far, uh, well, we did all the uh, paint flecking. I did the painting of the uh, flat flat green, which is here the XF five, which covered the whole thing. Now you can see here, well, hopefully you can see the cap here for this flat green doesn't really match that. And again. Um, the reason for that partly is just the paint dried a little drier than the cap shows but then also i did put a good uh two or three coats of the duplicolor matte clear the wheel stuff that we've used before i'll, I'll um, try to put a screenshot of that stuff up right here uh, it's a really great matte coating uh very inexpensive as far as uh, for how much quantity you get and it works really well for these models you don't always need to go and get the the testers or um you know the the name brand stuff for models you can use this uh, Duplicolor works really good. Okay, so uh, it's um, it's a really good product, but it does tend to darken 
these paints a little more than the other ones do so just be aware of that even though it is a little a uh, lot a lot more uh, inexpensive it will darken the tone of your uh, paints a little bit more that being said i'm happy with uh, the way this came out and i only did do uh, one uh, one color here i didn't do like before uh, initially i had like seven greens out here and i was going to do it a little spotty and stuff i just I gave that up <laughs> and um, figured there's enough detail on here uh, with the uh, paint flecking and uh, everything else to give enough variety to the ship. And I think it looks really good. Another thing to point out is I did actually go back and fix this. Remember, it was a little off centered and I had told everyone here that uh, I wasn't really concerned about it. I was just going to leave it. Anyway, the more I stared at it, the more it got to me. So there it is. I, I, I broke it off, reapplied it. It really wasn't that hard, and it's pretty good now. It's, it's more or less in line. I'm a lot happier, and on the bottom, there was a big gap over here on one of these sides, and that's no longer there. And uh, oh, uh, speaking of this, now this uh, red here, this is just you guys, this is just a flat red. I think it's this one. Yep, flat red Tamiya XF7. Uh, I just hand brushed that on. Uh, some parts of this I did a little bit more paint, some a little bit less, just to give a feeling of some, some wear and tear. And then I just went through with a sandpaper and just sanded that down to get rid of any brush strokes and add a little bit of randomness you know some of these things i scrubbed a lot of paint off and some i didn't just to get this variation of, of of different it looks like different shades of red but it's one shade of red just sanded down uh more than other spots so that turned out really good and then um the other thing i did after that was i just put a really good uh, coat of wash on here with the testers uh mo well, i'm sorry the model master enamel stain now as we've talked about this is no longer available uh, i just like it because it has the little marble in there when i shake it up and it's uh, kind of solid uh, i gotta put a little more thinner in there but uh this stuff works really well and i'm glad i have it but you can use any uh, enamel stain um finish that off with some of this tamiya weathering master and we've uh we've talked about that before it's these three you get these in different shades it says black brown and white and um what you do is you just apply that it comes with a little applicator but that goes bye bye really quick so you just go and buy these things they come in like a little matchbook thing you get these in a makeup section at target i think they're for eyeliner or something but uh pretty cheap to get those and uh you just apply that with with that and you, um when this stuff gets a little hard if you know, like i've had this for probably four years uh, you just take a pick or something and you just scrape some off and it cuts like a powder and then you just put the applicator on and rub it where you want if you uh, want to see that demonstrated you can go back to the r2d2 and uh, r5d4 video series uh, in the second in the second video of that series uh, I really go through weathering uh, those guys but that's it um, that's all I did for the weathering on here now, for those of you who uh, watched the live stream of the Sci-Fi Workshop number two that we had on uh, last Sunday, from it would be the 27th of October, uh, 2024. Uh, if you go back and watch that, we were talking with Gary Ambrosia. And Gary had a lot of tips for weathering and stuff like that. And he gave me a really good tip, and that is to use uh, water. Spray, spray a little bit of water. Um, just very light mist over over your piece when you're weathering and that helps if you're applying a uh, like an acrylic wash uh and anyway i tried that with uh the weathering master with this stuff because it it goes on sometimes you can't really see if it's going on really well so i'd give it a light mist with that just very very light like one spritz like like that <laughs> hopefully you saw that um yeah one spritz and then i put this on and it really gave some nice effects and it allowed me to apply this stuff and it came off of this uh these applicators a lot more nicely and it, i was able to smear and smudge so the only two places i really put some of this stuff is right here in this back part of the ship let me zoom in maybe you can see it there you go yeah you can you can see that right here I uh, really kind of gummed that up and then back here where the engine is, I figured that would get a lot of darkness. And then in here, some, some of it in, in this area. And then on these uh, 
Uh, Gary called them escalator uh, stairs, which that's kind of what they look like. Um, so yeah, I would put some in there. Anyway, uh, maybe I, I think I put a little bit on the guns here, uh, on the disruptor cannons, uh, and just in some other spots. But um, the, the wash that we applied with the testers uh, enamel stain really did the trick. So she's ready to go. At least as, as she's ready to go as she's going to get. <laughs> so let's turn it over. And we'll talk a little bit about these darn feet. I'm going to zoom in right here now. The directions, you guys, we've talked about this on the first video. These are them. This is all you get. And this is really, uh, doesn't, doesn't help much. You get a little bit here how to construct these legs, but it doesn't tell you which way to orient them really. And then you get this diagram here. You've got um, these little Y pieces. I think those are supposed to be hydraulics. It doesn't really say. So uh, I just painted them silver right here and they're drying or aluminum or something. Uh, but those kind of go like that. The, now I'm, I will definitely document that and explain that when we get there. Uh, but the feet that I painted here, uh, right, hopefully you can see this. It's hard to tell sometimes. Right here. Right there. These feet. These are the feet right here. And um, I think I applied, I put these on right. The good thing is that these little notches there, or these two, uh, where this uh, pewter piece is, where they connect to the foot here, there's, they're a certain distance apart there and a shorter distance apart there. So there really is only one way you can put those on. So thankfully, at least the designers thought to make that easier. And the pieces are basically the same. I didn't paint the bottom because she's going to be landed anyway. Um, uh, again, these are pewter, so I didn't paint them. And, um, and that's it. And I think this is the right way. These guys here are the other two pieces. So let me, let me backtrack. These two pieces here are uh, this, this one right here. It's that piece, the upper leg. And that is kind of there. And you can see these little ridges right there. Those little ridges right there are here. So that's how I figured out that, that this part was in the front of the ship like i said it was really kind of i had to stare at this for a while uh there are two little notches down in here for these pieces to fit in i think i got them in um what i did i just put a little C, uh, ca glue down in there because this is pewter put some ca glue down in there and then i put a little bit of the instaset kicker on the tabs here and then i just placed it down and and as long as I got it down and they went in the holes and they did, uh, they, they set up really nicely. So they're not going anywhere. And uh, I will do the, sa do the same with the CA glue uh, for these parts. These might still be drying, dry drying, drying, but it's kind of hard to show. Maybe I can, maybe I can show it. We'll zoom in really far. Now right there, this little notch Let's get the pointer here, or the dental pick. This, there's a little notch here. And if you, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of in a half moon shape. There's a half circle. These guys here, right there, they're kind of in a half moon shape. Not really, it's almost a full circle, but I can see that they were trying. So they do only go on one way, I'm assuming. So I think this one would be over here and I would have to put it on there. Maybe it's the other way around. Like I said, I'm, I'm really going to have to, to play around with this stuff. Oh, and, and the other thing was I did glue, I'm going to have to glue it, these pieces on. So it, and it doesn't say that in the instructions. Let's see. Yeah. There, I mean, there's no photo reference here, so it doesn't say, you know, which end goes where. Okay, at least this isn't scale. Like there, if you can see here, that's a good thing. Let's zoom out so you can actually see what I'm talking about. I'm so sorry, you guys. 
Okay, yeah, now you can see. Uh, these are in scale, so it does look like this is the right way to, to put that on. So we'll have to... Okay, there we go. I just put a little dry fit there. Maybe that's the way to go for this. Because it's the underside. Okay, so hopefully they're aligned. I'm looking at it from the side here. They're pretty straight, so I think it I think she will sit sit nicely. They really did make this like a bird, didn't they? Okay. Now this is being a little stubborn, so when I glue this, what I'm going to have to do is put the glue on here, hold it, and then hit it with the kicker, and it will um, it will straight stay straight. So let's let's do that. All right. So we've got the glue here. I've got it on a little pallet and a little, a little swab there to, to put it on, and I've got the kicker there. All right. So what I'm going to do? We're going to let me get this in the camera. So I'm just put a little glue there. I'm just going to hold it in place. Put a little bit of glue there. Keep holding it. Make sure it's straight. And we give it a little spray. What I should do is I really need to get like a uh, an eyedropper with this stuff. And then I can more easily uh, put it in. Or even better yet, put it in one of these guys here. That would be nice. Let's put a little more. That was enough to hold it, but this will be enough to really secure it there. I'm not worried about kind of gobbing it on here because you're not going to see this. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully no one picks up the ship. I had my step kid one time go, Hey, nice X-Wing uh, model. Does it fly? And they moved as if to throw it, like in the paper airplane. And I freaked out, not thinking that they would never do something like that. So they got me. All right. Well, um, let's see. Let's give it a quick... Well... It's not quite even here. It may not look like it on the camera, but it's it's quite uh, quite offset for myself. So I'm going to pause the video here, and I'm going to probably break this thing or bend it, but I have to get it to uh, to sit right. Or maybe maybe I can just test it here. Okay, let's uh, let's give this a try. So as you can see here. It's really kind of cattywampus there. One's a little bit down. But maybe when we set it down, it won't matter. So she's sitting okay. All right, I see a little bit. Yeah, I see a lift there. Okay, that's not going to be... That's not acceptable. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here and see if I can't figure that out. All right, everyone, so I uh, figured it out there. It took me about five minutes, maybe seven minutes to figure it out. So uh, what what I ended up doing was I took the legs off of the of, of the ship. They just, you know, snapped off from the CA glue. And what I did was I, I nipped off the, the little um, tabs that were in the pewter pieces that fit into the ship. So let me, let's put the camera here. On a stand and we'll flip it over so we can explain and we will zoom out all right so uh, right here on in in there where it connects you can see let's use this paintbrush to point with so right there where it connects uh, there was a there was a tab on the pewter piece there and a tab on the other side that went into the ship and there were two two little holes in there uh, where they went in I couldn't tell when I first put it in uh, if if they went in the tabs or not they were very tight fit and uh, so what I opted to do was I, I just cut them off <laughs> and uh, just put a, a good gob of CA glue down in there 
and uh, flattened. So I basically flattened out these pieces, put it down there, uh, held it flat with you know with my eye. You know, use my eye to make it level. And as you can see here, it's not perfect, but uh, it it does sit flat at least. Uh, and basically uh, aligned it right, then then held it with one hand and and sprayed it with the uh, with the Insta Set with the with the other hand. Uh, I think I'm zoomed out as far as I can. So, um, yeah. So it just took a little bit of uh, a little bit of thought, but but uh, figured it out there. And now uh, when it sit, when it's, the ship sits, it sits really, really nice and flat. So, um, and the cool thing is that the the nose is uh, it is it off? Looks like it's off, or maybe it's supposed to rest. I don't know. Um, it looks like it's a little bit. No, it's not. It, it's resting on the ground. Maybe it's supposed to be that way. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to go back and watch the show. Probably, it's probably supposed to be upright a little bit, but um, I don't think we're going to be able to to get that um, just because of the weight. The weight of the ship. It's uh, you know so lop lopsided. It's only two little feet there, like a bird. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I will go and start building the diorama for this thing. Uh, we might, I might not get the whole thing done uh, to do a final reveal, but we'll see. I might light up the diorama to get the uh, uh, the spotlights there on the ship just to give it a little bit of illumination from around it, but not within the ship. So uh, we'll see. We'll see uh, what, what, what we can do with that, how much space I have and all that kind of thing. Um, all right, guys, so that is it for tonight's uh, video, uh, and uh, we'll come right back, I think, probably for the final uh, reveal. The only piece I have left to put on this is the little uh, the ramp that, that goes up into the ship. So we'll uh, see, you, uh, see you soon.